In this video, we'll discuss 2D workflows in RayTK. We're building on concepts from earlier videos in the series, so I recommend at least watching the concepts video before this one. So far in the intro series, we've always been using the RayMarch Render 3D operator to render 3D scenes. But RayTK has several other types of renders, some of which work with different types of coordinates, including 2D coordinates. There are also ways to use 2D operators within 3D scenes that we'll cover in a later video. We'll start by opening the palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a render 2D operator. And then add a null top to the end so you can see the output. The render 2D operator supports a few different types of inputs but they must use either 2D or 1D coordinates. It supports SDFs, but they have to be 2D SDFs, and it handles them differently than Raymarch Render 3D does. Open the palette again. 2D SDFs are listed in their own section, and most of them have SDF2D at the end of the name, except for a couple of the older ones, like Circle. Now create a star SDF2D and connect that to the renderer. Now the output will still be dark, and that's because of how Render2D handles SDF inputs. We're going to change the null top to connect to the second output of the render 2D. And this output produces the SDF's distance values. Depending on the version of the toolkit that you're using, it may default to aligning the coordinates differently. If the pattern is off-center like this, on the render 2D, change the alignment to center. Then set the zoom parameter to 0.5. And that will give us a wider view of the shape. What we're seeing here is a distance value in each pixel. Recall from the concepts video how Raymarch Render 3D works by asking its input about points in space until it hits a surface. With Render 2D, the process is much simpler. For each pixel, it determines what coordinates that represents using the zoom, alignment, and some other settings. Then it asks its input for a result for those coordinates, and then puts that result into the rendered image. In this case, it's asking the star SDF2D for each pixel, and the star SDF2D answers with surface information, including the sign distance to the surface. And that distance is what's being shown here in the second output. Right-click in the top viewer, and choose Display Pixel Values. Now, as you move the mouse around, you'll see that as it gets further away from the star, those numbers get larger. And when it gets closer to it, they get smaller. But inside the star, the values are all zero. SDFs, though, are supposed to be producing negative distance on their insides. And that's where the signed part of the name comes from. In this case, the renderer is trying to output negative values, but the pixel format that it's using doesn't support negatives. On the render 2D, change the pixel format setting to 32-bit float RGBA. Now, when you look at the values on the inside of the star, you'll see that they are negative and they get smaller the further in to the center it gets, and larger as it gets closer to the edge. While this distance data can be useful, it isn't that interesting to look at. There are a few ways that we can produce colorized images with Render 2D. The main approach is to use an operator that converts the SDF into colors. Create a Colorize SDF2D operator 
and insert that between the SDF and the renderer. This operator takes the SDF answers produced by its input and converts that to colors using a pattern that shows the distances. You'll notice that the SDF data output of the renderer is now blank. Switch it back to the first input. The SDF data is blank because, as far as the renderer is concerned, it isn't getting SDF answers when it asks its input. It's just getting vectors representing RGB colors. When the renderer's input is a float or a vector field, it just takes those values and spits them out as colors at the first output. We can also use field operators without any SDFs involved. Create a noise field and connect that to the input on the render 2D. Now you'll see an error indicator and the output will be the red and blue error pattern. Middle click on the renderer to see what the error is. Down at the bottom, it says input does not support chord type VEC3 or vector3. That means that with its current settings, the noise field only knows how to answer questions about 3D coordinates, but the render 2D doesn't have 3D coordinates for it. On the noise field, change the coordinate type to either VEC2 or 2D, depending on which version of the toolkit you're using. Many operators will automatically use the expected type of coordinates depending on what they're connected to, but some require a manual step like this. This setup with a noise field and a render 2D is a lot like a noise top, and it has similar parameters. You can move the pattern, change the scaling, and the amplitude, or choose different kinds of noise patterns. Most filter operators, including transform filters, can also work in a 2D environment. Create a modulo polar and insert that between the noise field and the renderer. Set the mirror type to mirror, and then you can try adjusting the pre-rotate setting, and you get a kind of kaleidoscope effect. And this is doing basically the same thing that it does in 3D, but just on a 2D pattern instead of a 3D environment. Like with tops, we can pass images into the scene, modify them, and pass them out again. Create a texture field operator and make sure you're using texture field and not texture 3D field. Set the coordinate type to 2D. Create a movie file in top and choose an image or video file. Add a null top to the output of that and then drag the null onto the texture field and assign it into the texture parameter. We're then going to connect the texture field directly to the renderer. On the texture field, adjust the scale so that the image fills the rendered output. Texture field is covered in more detail in other videos but it's basically a field that, when asked for values for some coordinates, pulls the color out of a top and uses that. Now insert the modulo polar between the texture field and the renderer. Since the modulo polar is changing some of the coordinates so they're outside the texture's range, we're getting these blank bits in the corners there. So on the texture field, we're going to set the extend mode to mirror. And now to get a wider view, we could either use the zoom setting on the renderer, or we could create a scale operator and insert that after the modulo polar. 
and set the uniform scale down to something like 0 0.1. By using different types of filters, you can create some pretty interesting effects. That's it for this section. In future sections, we'll cover ways that we can use 2D operators within 3D scenes. Stay tuned for the next video in the series. And check out my Patreon for access to scene files, exclusive tutorials, and more. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe.